Welcome to a severed new episode of the Demonic Compendium, the show where I discuss the mythology, design, and game history of your favorite Megami Tensei demons. Halloween is always a great time for ghost stories, and have I got a good one for you today. So cross your legs and mind the gap, because today, we're talking about Reiko Kashima. Reiko Kashima is a famous Japanese urban legend, but the origins of this chilling tale go far deeper than one might expect. So, once upon a time in Japan, there existed two completely separate ghost stories. One involved a spirit that would haunt you if you didn't share the story of it with someone else, and one that would steal your legs. Eventually, these two stories were combined into a singular being, but it didn't really have a proper name. It was mostly just described as a ghastly creature. In the early 1970s, the creature was given the name Kashima, supposedly through a belief that a fallen version of a Japanese deity haunted a shrine in the city of Kashima. This shrine had branches throughout all of Japan, including Hokkaido, where our titular ghost was supposedly from. Once the vague creature was given a name and more details, like being a ghost, it started spreading much faster. The story goes that the only way to fully break the curse of Reiko Kashima is to tell her story to someone else within three days. This clearly worked, as the supernatural short story went from Hokkaido all the way to Okinawa within only a few years. It really wasn't long before the entire country had heard some version of the story. But just who is Reiko Kashima? Well, like most ghost stories, there are tons of variations. So if the story you know is different from the one I'm about to tell you, that's perfectly normal. The main two that I stumbled upon both involve a high school girl named Reiko Kashima, who was either relentlessly bullied by her classmates, or the much more horrifying, sexually abused by American soldiers occupying Japan. Either way, Reiko Kashima opted to take her own life by diving in front of a train, but unfortunately, she didn't land perfectly on the tracks and the train completely severed the lower half of her body, leaving her torso alive where it now wanders as an angry spirit searching for her missing legs. If you think this sounds at all familiar, you might also be aware of the story of Tekka Tekka, a legless ghost woman who carries a sickle and is named after the onomatopoeic sounds that she makes when she moves around. These stories are often associated with one another, and even in the 2009 Japanese horror film, Tekka Tekka, the ghost is named Reiko Kashima. See, I am still doing a movie monster this year. Reiko is often said to haunt school bathrooms, because that's just where all the cool Japanese ghosts hang out, I guess. So this story may also be the basis for other tales like Hanako or Akamanto. The most common tale of what Reiko Kashima actually does when she appears to you is ask you if you know where her legs are. Giving any wrong answer or saying you don't know generally results in her either ripping off your legs or killing you outright. The correct answer to her question is the Machine Expressway. If you give her this answer, she'll follow it up with, Who told you this? Where again, answering incorrectly will result in leglessness or death. The correct answer is, of course, Reiko Kashima. This apparently just confuses her so much that she decides to leave you alone. Then there are other versions where instead of asking you where her legs are, she'll just tell you to give her yours. If this happens, just politely tell her that you're using them right now. Reiko Kashima's compendium entry from Shin Megami Tensei Liberation D2 refers to her as a Japanese ghost from urban legend who is usually depicted without legs. She is said to appear before those who by any means hear her story. If she appears, she will ask questions like, where are my legs? Answer correctly, and she will then ask, who did you hear this from? At any point, if you answer her questions incorrectly, she will remove your limbs or simply kill you. Design-wise, Reiko Kashima comes from a very specific type of demon that Kaneko gave us during the late 90s, where it's just a very solid take on a Japanese urban legend. Reiko Kashima is the angry, legless ghost of a Japanese girl who will rip your legs off, and that's exactly what her design here is giving us. I love the touch that the leg she's holding is still dripping with blood, implying it may have been ripped off quite recently, rather than it being one she's been holding onto for a while. One aspect of Reiko's design that I do really like, even if I'm not entirely sure if this was Kaneko's intention, is her dress being red and blue. Like I said, Reiko Kashima inspired several other ghost stories throughout Japan, one of which, Akamanto, asks those at haunts if they want a red or blue cape, and yes, either of these answers kills you. But I do assume that Reiko's dress being these two colors is no coincidence. Pretty much the only other design Reiko Kashima has ever had in the franchise is in Persona 2 Eternal Punishment, where she has dark hair, wears a long green dress, and carries a sickle more akin to the Teke Teke story. 
There is a very good reason why she looks like this here, but I'll explain that in the next section. And speaking of Teke Teke, that also has its own design in the franchise, actually appearing as a creepy legless corpse-like demon in Persona 1, and in Eternal Punishment looking more like some weird little hand puppet. But I suppose in either case, the takeaway is that it doesn't have legs. It also doesn't have the sickle, which I think is weird in both instances. As far as game history goes, Reiko Kashima hasn't really appeared in too many titles. She made her debut in Devil Summoner Soul Hackers as a member of the Rumor Race alongside other Japanese urban legends like Turbo Granny, Purple Mirror, and yeah, even the aforementioned Akamanto or Red Cloak. I absolutely love this idea of having more urban legend demons in the franchise. It'd be like if SMT5 announced it was going to have like Hachishak Sama as a demon. Which I would be totally on board with, by the way. Both Reiko Kashima and Tech Tech appeared in Persona 2 Eternal Punishment as optional boss fights that can be fought by spreading rumors. Reiko herself is only encountered if players pick the Eriko Kirishima route that takes them through the Sumaro TV dungeon. Once there, Maya and friends will encounter a frightened security guard who claims he saw Reiko Kashima. Of course, another security guard reveals what he actually saw was actress Junko Kuroso and he was frightened of her. Still, the rumor can be spread, allowing us to encounter Reiko inside of the dungeon. The fact that in Eternal Punishment, Junko was mistaken for Reiko explains her design of having a terrifying grin and green dress, as they're indicative of her real-world counterpart in this particular instance. Defeating her causes her to drop an umbrella, which you can turn into the security guard. An interesting note is the security guard gives us a sort of puzzle where Reiko's name is an acrostic with stuff like the R stands for revenge and the E stands for eradication. I haven't played the Japanese version, so I'm not 100% positive here, but I assume this was the localizer's attempts at bringing in a common aspect of the original ghost story, where those haunted by Reiko Kashima need to chant specific phrases beginning with Ka, Shi, and Ma in order to keep themselves temporarily safe. To fight the weird little hand puppet, Tech Tech, Maya must first talk to the pathetic loser, who swears he saw Tech Tech at the school festival, and spread the rumor that Tech Tech has appeared at Kasugeyama High, before finding the demon, killing it, and stealing its name tag. And speaking of Tech Tech in the Persona series, I already mentioned that Tekka Tekka appears in the first Persona game, and it's known as Glebe in Revelations Persona. <laughs> Glebe. Reiko Kashima's largest roles come from the mobile title Shin Megami Tensei Liberation D2, where she made her comeback after so many years. Her first big role came from an event when she was brought into the game called The Secret of Reiko Kashima. The event involved Chalk Eater on a quest to learn as much as he could about this story, and interestingly, it does explore some of the different variations on the legend I mentioned before. He eventually receives a creepy phone call from an unknown being, and a few days later, Reiko Kashima appears in the Church of False Gods, ready for fusion. But apparently the horror film fanatic and the petite poltergeist managed to patch things up, since in one of the intermission chapters, Shang Sun decides to make his own horror film. And what better special effects can you get than by summoning the real thing? So he six Reiko on Shiori, and that goes about as well for her as one could expect. She also has a unique ability called Your Next in relation to her origin story that curses any opponent she personally takes down with a rather ominous message. Reiko Kashima is one of the most influential Japanese ghost stories, and it spread far and wide due to the belief that you need to share the story within three days if you want to keep your legs and or life. But now that you've all heard the story by watching this video, maybe you should share it on social media within the next three days. Just to be safe. And so there you have it, Reiko Kashima, the legless, lifeless last longingly lingering near locomotives looking for lost limbs. Did I leave out something you thought was important? Was I just plain wrong about something? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to let me know who you'd like to see me talk about in future episodes. That's going to do it for this episode of the Demonic Compendium, and I'll see you next time. But be careful while you rest that a demon doesn't take over your body.